Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We have some really interesting news today on one of my favorite Palantir SPACs. No, it's not Weijo, but it's in the same industry, which is electric vehicles and electric vehicle charging. Now, why is this one of my favorite SPACs? The reason for this is because this is a SPAC that's actually doing some crazy stuff. So Palantir's investment into tritium charging creates electric vehicle charging stations. Now, Weijo does a lot of connected vehicle data. They try to help car manufacturers, OEMs become more responsible, become more productive, become more efficient, basically become more smart with their electric vehicle strategies. In order to have electric vehicles, you need to have electric vehicle charging stations, right? You kind of need to have the foundation before you have the house. You need to be able to actually charge these cars in order to be able to make sense of them. And the next revolution we're going to see in the renewable industry is going to be electric vehicle charging stations. If the Tesla bulls are correct, if the Neo bulls are correct, if electric vehicles, Lucid, uh, Polestar, I believe is the name of the other one. I might be butchering the na their name. But if all these companies do get significant market share and the Toyotas and Hondas and Hyundais and all these companies fail to adapt to electric vehicles, that means means people are going to start buying electric cars over traditional combustion engine cars. And when that happens, there's going to be fundamental changes in terms of the paradigms, uh, particularly in terms of energy that we use to operate these cars, but also the infrastructure that is used to operate these cars as well. The other reason this spec is so interesting to me is because I made a video that I'm going to switch to right now. Uh, you guys can see my face. That's where, that's where I pause in the video. Uh, I'm not going to play this video, but I'm going to leave it in the description. And this was published on January 18, 2022. This was called Palantir's Master Plan Investing in Tritium to Dominate EV Charging. The reason I felt this was a master plan, outside of the fact that it was great that uh, Palantir invested in an electric vehicle charging station company that has a really decent market share, which is the news update we're going to get into today. They got another new contract, which is going to be interesting to discuss, is that They've also unleashed a new product with Weijo, which is one of their SPACs. And that product they've unleashed with Weijo, they've done it together, is an electric vehicle charging station operating system. So all the electric vehicle charging stations, they need to be able to communicate with the municipalities. They need to be able to talk to the grid. They need to be able to talk to network operators. Basically, there needs to be a lot of data and software encoded in the charging station. It's not just a regular gas station in order to know how to effectively and efficiently use electricity at scale. And when we're talking about at scale, we're talking about billions of cars one day that are going to be using this type of technology. Well, Palantir wants to create the software, as they always try to do. They try to create the platform, the operating system, the software for these types of new revolutionary parad paradigmatic shifts. And they've included that product with Weijo. Now, that was a product offering they included with Weijo, which is one of the SPACs they've invested in, on top of the fact that they've invested in Tritium. Tritium is an electric vehicle charging station manufacturer. To me, it goes hand in hand. It's kind of this like master plan. It's very cohesive because if you're creating electric vehicle charging station uh, softwares with one company that does connected vehicle data that you have invested in as a SPAC, what if the other company that you're invested in as a SPAC starts using that same software you've created with another company and now all three of these companies are feeding on top of each other and the biggest thing is that Palantir has an equity stake on both of those companies in order for them to one day become bigger and get a, and a, and get a reasonable return for Palantir. So to me, I think it's a really interesting strategy that Tritium is creating electric vehicle charging stations. They're trying to become this you know unique name brand when it comes to the charging station um, ecosystem. Palantir has an equity stake in them, Palantir has an equity stake in Weijo, and they all three seamlessly could work together. Today's article kind of reinforces uh, what's happening right now, which is that British Petroleum BP that we know has worked with Palantir in the past chooses Tritium for the next move towards global EV charging expansion. This is from Ed Garston, and this is on Forbes. I'll leave the article in the description. So it says... Fueling its plan to widely expand into electric vehicle recharging networks, UK-based oil giant BP has entered into a multi-year agreement with Tritium DCFC, which is their ticker symbol, a leading developer and manufacturer of direct current fast charges for EVs, the company's announced Monday. Now, notice that BP is a uh, European company, and in my morning live stream today, Sachin, who's an oil and gas expert, he was in the chat basically saying, look, European companies are the ones that are actually trying to make the shift into this renewable energy uh, new world, uh, and American companies, if they choose not to do that, if Exxon, Shell, they don't choose to do that they're going to be left behind. So it's really important. The reason why this news is really important is because when you have major oil companies like BP, everyone remembers BP, remember 2008 when they had the oil spill and in I think it was in the the coast of Me uh, the Gulf coast of Mexico, Mexico again, I could be super let me let's just look that up right now. BP oil spill. Where was that done? Because that was oh that was 2010. That Deepwater Horizon. So this was uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. Yes, I was right on that. So this was really bad. 
this was not good. I mean, this was like corporate companies just like doing whatever they want, really not caring about the environment. It was not good for that to happen. And, you know, you don't really have to have that happen if you're not using oil. So BP is one of those companies that's like, look, the electric vehicle market is shaping. It's starting to change. Tesla's obviously going crazy. There is a world in which we and our business is going to disintegrate. It's not going to exist anymore. Maybe it's 20 years from now, but even if it's two decades from now, we have to be able to be ready for the next major expansion. So Sachin believes that European companies are going to be able to do that versus American companies. We haven't really seen Exxon and Shell go to, to that level yet. The deal calls for Tritium to provide an initial order of just under a thousand chargers and related services in BP's markets in the UK, Australia, and New Zealand, according to a release, which means B, uh, 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 Tritium is going to be able to expand into these markets. Tritium is already in some of these markets. I know in the UK, they already have a major presence, which is probably why they got this deal, um, but it's great for them to expand more. Just last month, BP Pulse, the oil giant's EV charging business, announced a plan to triple its number of charging points in the UK to 16,000 in the next eight years, spending about a billion euros over the next 10 years. This latest move represents an expansion of that plan beyond the UK to include the two nations with close ties to Great Britain, which would be Australia and New Zealand. And you can see these ads. I was looking for some cool shirts. So now you guys know what ads Google is targeting me with. The energy company's rapid recharging strategy is in line with its goal to be a net zero emissions company by 2050 or sooner. You only get there if you have electric vehicle charging stations and electric vehicle cars. This net zero thing does not happen if we're still using oil and gas and is aimed at expected explosion in EV adoption over the next three decades. Now, it says the BP Energy Outlook rapid transition scenario estimates predicts as much as 1 billion electrified cars and trucks in, in use globally by 2040. And to be honest, that could be conservative if Tesla really hits some crazy exponential growth curves and like forces the market to adapt, with EVs accounting for about 80% of passenger cars in use by 2040. 50. Uh, quote, Richard Bartlett, senior vice president of BP, says, I'm delighted that this new global agreement with Tritium will help drive BP to deliver its mission to provide fast, reliable charging for EV drivers and to accelerate the rollout of charging infrastructure needed as the world transitions to decarbonize road transport. Now, the reason this is also interesting is because we have uh, this news that came out a while back that Tritium announced the location of a new U.S. manufacturing facility in Tennessee. And this was one of the examples of the chargers that was on stage with President Joe Biden as he was kind of making this uh, sort of, the, the, I think he was introducing his infrastructure bill and he was like, we're going to put $7 billion just to EV charging stations, not to EV cars, just to EV charging stations. So Tritium got, uh, I don't know how much they got out of that, probably not a lot, right? And they're going to have to do a good job, create a lot of jobs in Tennessee, show that their product works, so that they have a sustainable business. Business, and they're going to be able to get more government dollars for electric vehicle charging stations because the government, at least the Biden administration, definitely wants to subsidize it. And even if we have, you know, a Republican administration in the future, electric vehicles are probably going to be subsidized. I mean, they were subsidized when Trump was elected and Elon, you know, is, is still needed subsidies from the government. So it's very likely that this is a area of the, the market. If you're thinking of just like, how do I invest in this market? That's not going to go away due to political tensions. At least I don't think, because it's not even a question of climate change and whether it's Democrat or, or, or Republican. It's more so a question of just like what makes the most business sense and right now I, I think we have uh, you know 50 billion barrels of oil left I mean something like by 2050 we have another 40 years I'm, I'm wrong on the number of barrels it's likely hundreds of billions of barrels but I'm right on the number of years it's about 46 years left until we just run out of oil so this transition is going to happen regardless the question becomes what companies are going to be the big players uh, when this transition happens so as you can see the infrastructure investment and jobs act is, is expected to provide 7.5 billion for investment for deploying a network of 500,000 EV chargers along highway corridors in the United States. This network is intended to facilitate long distance travel as well as shorter distance travel within communities to provide convenient charging operations or options and encourage the electrification of transportation across the country. I welcome Tritium to Tennessee and want to thank the company for its commitment to create more than 500 new jobs in Wilson County. Obviously, politicians love more jobs. Uh, Governor Bill Lee of Tennessee says, our state's highly skilled workforce and position as a leader in the EV industry can, will continue to attract companies like Tritium to Tennessee. So overall, I mean, this is great news for Palantir. Again, the stock price is not going to reflect it, but you've got to look at these SPAC investments. They've strategically invested in these companies for a purpose. And if some of these investments turn out to be really good investments because the companies are actually doing amazing things like getting all these new deals and these new contracts and being on the next frontier of what could possibly become multi-hundred billion dollar, if not trillion dollar industries. I mean, if Tritium is the global name for charging stations, and again, there's going to be a lot of winners, but if Tritium is one of those, it's going to have really good returns for Palantir. And on top 
of that, if Tritium is using Palantir software that they've created with Weijo, and Tritium has hundreds of thousands of charging stations across the world that are using this software, that sets a precedent for other electric charging stations uh, manufacturers to also use that software because the software works, the software makes sense, it makes business faster, efficient, uh, effective, etc. So really, really good news coming out of uh, Tritium, the SPAC, awesome, awesome stuff, and excited for this SPAC and Weijo. I mean, these are the two SPACs that I'm the most excited about because EVs are happening, like I know they're happening. Some of the other SPACs, like electric jets, I don't know if that's going to happen. It's more of a bet, but EVs I know that are happening. I know are happening. And Tritium has amazing market share. Weijo is doing incredibly innovative things. So those two together with Palantir creates a nice three-headed monster to try to attack the EV market and potentially have some awesome returns. So those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. How do you feel about Tritium partnering with BP to create just under a thousand new electric vehicle charging stations and expanding uh, outside of the UK into Australia and New Zealand? Thank you guys for your thoughts. Looking forward to your comments. I'll see you in the next one.